Scientists reconstructed an Egyptian mummy's throat, and it groaned from the grave. An ancient Egyptian priest named Nesyamun had one wish when he died. He hoped for life after death. 3,000 years later, that dream became a reality thanks to a team of pioneering academics from a trio of English universities. Together, they rebuilt part of the mummy's throat and listened as the ancient priests grumbled into life once again. And that distinction came before scientists had the idea to bring Nesyamun back to life, too. They wouldn't reanimate the mummy's entire body, of course. Instead, they used 3D printing to reconstruct the ancient priest's vocal tract. Then, by using this, in conjunction with a man-made larynx sound, they could listen to what he had to say. The Karnak Temple Complex in modern-day Luxor stands as Egypt's second most popular tourist site, just behind the Giza pyramids. When the cluster of chapels, temples, pylons, and other structures was in its heyday, it had even more importance to the people of ancient Egypt. That's because Karnak, then located in the city of Thebes, gave people a place to worship. Nesyamun's work didn't just require him to be in the proximity of the Amun statue, though. The priest served as the temple's scribe during his post there. He also led religious rituals, which had him singing and speaking to worshippers. Clearly, a strong voice would be important to him. Historians knew this and other details about Nesyamun because of the way his body was preserved after his death in about 1100 BC. For instance, they found a leather ornament tucked into the bandages wrapped around the Wab priest's body. That little trinket indicated that Nesyamun died under the rule of Ramses XI, who led Egypt from 1113 to 1085 BC. Of course, researchers wouldn't know anything about Nesyamun without the discovery of his remains. That happened in 1823 when his body surfaced at Karnak. From there, it ended up at the Leeds City Museum, where experts have researched it for years. And they're lucky to have had that opportunity, considering the fiery events of the city's recent past. So Nessia Moon escaped World War II more or less unscathed, and has since become a focus for researchers in Leeds and beyond. His remains have become one of the world's most intensively studied relics from the ancient Egyptian era. It seems there's always more to learn, too. Just ask the team of English academics who brought Nessia Moon's voice back. The vocal cords have a vital role in determining the normal pitch of a person's voice. The end product comes down in large part to the tightness and length of these cords. However, the vocal tract itself plays a part in this process too. It filters larynx vibrations before they emerge as a voice. No matter what, the sound that comes out is always one of a kind. Just like fingerprints, no two voices are exactly the same. As such, a dead person's voice could only be replicated with the exact dimensions of their vocal tract determined. This is usually impossible, as most buried bodies lose their soft tissue over time. So skeletal remains wouldn't have a vocal tract to measure and replicate. Of course, mummification ensured that Nesyamun's form would remain almost entirely intact for three millennia. And yet, finding Nesyamun's vocal tract in near-perfect shape was only the beginning. After that, scholars from the Royal Holloway, University of London, and the University of York joined up with the team from the Leeds City Museum. Together, they attempted to restore the mummy's voice with the remnants they had. The CAT scan gave the researchers a blueprint of Nessie Moon's vocal tract, which they recreated with even more modern technology. Namely, they 3D printed a pristine version of the priest's vocal tract from his lips down to his larynx. But the resulting model couldn't create noise on its own. Howard had already used such a technique on living patients as well as on himself. However, neither he nor any other expert had ever tried to use the technique to revive a dead person's voice. So, if the procedure worked on Nessie Moon's vocal tract, it would be the first time a deceased individual would speak again. So, with Nessie Moon's vocal tract connected to the loudspeaker, Howard hooked the combined device to a computer. With the computer, the speech specialist could send an electric waveform through the speaker, it would work just like a larynx, where vibrations create high and low-pitched noise to create a person's voice. In 2020, though, all the England-based team had was the recreated vocal tract and the computerized organ with which to create voice-like sounds. So they gave it a try 
to see how Nessie Moon's voice would sound. And the mummy spoke up for the first time in 3,000 years. The rumbles that came from Nessie Moon's vocal tract as of 2020 mimicked a vowel sound between that of bed and bad, according to time. Others described it as the sound of a sheep's bleat. Either way, this is just the beginning of what the team hopes they can do with the mummy's vocal tract in the future. For now, Howard explained, the system can create just the steady sound of Nessie Moon's track as it was in his sarcophagus. In the future, though, he and other speech experts can study the way that vocal tracks shift and change over time. With that, Howard said, we can create running speech. For Getty Research Institute bioarchaeologist Rosalind Campbell, the project marked a principled take on anthropological research as the Lead City Museum team brought Nessie Moon back to life in the right way. The Los Angeles-based scientist said, I think their emphasis on returning Nessie Moon's voice, and thus some of his identity, is a vital acknowledgement of the ethical considerations not only in studying the past, but of clarifying the relevance of such research to the modern public. But the Leeds Museum team had nothing but good intentions for Nessie Moon's new voice. University of York archaeologist John Schofield explained to the Washington Post newspaper that a vocal interaction would change a person's museum experience. He said, when visitors encounter the past, it's usually a visual encounter. With this voice, we can change that. There's nothing more personal than someone's voice. On that, many wondered if the Nessie Moon project had gone too far. Indeed, most cultures consider human remains to be sacred. Interrupting a person's eternal rest for museum research could be crossing the line. However, the Leeds City Museum team believed that what they did would have been approved of by the test subject himself. Plus, the paper said, only those able to verbally confirm that they have had a virtuous life were granted entry to eternity and awarded the epithet Mat Keru, true of voice. With his voice restored, Ness Yamun could fulfill all of his wishes for the afterlife. And with technology improving, there's so much more that the mummy may soon be able to say. The world is filled with stories going viral every single day. But how many of these sites can you actually follow? We understand that your day should start with positive stories, stories that resonate with you. And so we started JoJo Stories. Our mission is to create meaningful stories that cover everything from animals to anthropology, history to environment and lifestyle. The kind of content you read on our site will be one you'll want to share with your family and friends. We hope you'll join our growing family and be part of our community. Welcome to JoJo Stories. JoJoStories.com